Hi. Um, for those of you who didn't meet me last week, uh, quick crash course. I'm an electrical engineer. I go to Corel. Uh, this summer I'm working at MakerBot, which is a company that makes 2D printers. Uh, and I blog and I make tutorials and I make videos and I do a lot of open source projects. So this week, uh, Dave asked me if I could talk to you guys about open sourcing the projects that you're working on here. Because um, you guys are making really cool stuff and it'd be great to share with the world. And I know a lot of you are basing your work off of work that was already previously released as open source. So it's generally common courtesy to release the work that's based off of that as derivatives as open source as well. So I'm going to talk about that and the advantages and disadvantages of various open source licenses just real quick. Um, Okay, so what is open source? Basically, what it is is you're providing the materials that you use to make your project available so that someone else can duplicate your project and expand upon it or improve upon it or change it for their needs, whatever. Um, a lot of companies do this thing where they say they're open source and they're not really because they provide like the compiled code, which is useless because you can't actually hack on it. Uh, so open source means you make the source code available, the stuff that you can actually hack and compile to uh, make a copy of the software, and then on the hardware end, it means releasing the schematics and the board design files, or your breadboard layout, if it's as simple as that, uh, and just making it so that people can replicate what you're doing. So, open source hardware is a relatively new concept. Open source software has been around for decades, right? Because Linux, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, whether or not you've used it, it's an operating system that probably exists on one or more electronic devices that you own. Um, be it a cable set-top box, or your computer, or your phone, or whatever. Um, this is an open source operating system. Open source software is makes sense. It's easy because you can distribute it over the internet. Uh, it's relatively simple to apply a license to it. You say, you know, you can copy this or you can't. You do or you don't release the source files. Um, with hardware, it's a little bit different because hardware costs, hardware costs money, um, whereas software doesn't necessarily. So the tricky thing with hardware that's been over the last few years uh, is Companies like Sparkfront and Adafruit and companies like that, which a lot of you guys are using parts from, they release the designs for their products open source. And a lot of people say, well, how does that make any sense? Anyone can just grab the files and make them themselves using raw components instead of buying them from US kits or whatever. And so there's a whole theory behind why this makes sense and why you can still make money doing open source. It's relatively complicated. Uh, what it comes down to, though, is the people releasing the software, you have to keep innovating to stay ahead. Uh, and in a lot of communities, like the community that you guys are getting involved in by doing these projects, the maker and, and hacker kind of community, uh, people want to help. So like at MakerBot, where I work, we release everything we do open source. Um, and what that's resulted in for a lot of the electronics that I work on there and a lot of uh, the design that I've done has been that the community wants to make it better, so they since they have access to the source code and they have access to the hardware design files, they make it better and then they send it back to us and they're like, these are improvements I made, why don't you start using them and then we use them. Uh, and that's great. So they get satisfaction knowing that they helped and they provided to the community and they made something better. Uh, we get feedback from them and they're actually able to contribute to the project instead of just, you know, if you think normal company, whoever made this TV shark, uh, if you have a complaint about this TV, you can't really do anything about it. It's too, you, you don't have access to the information necessary to say, oh, you know, I bumped up the voltage to the backlight in it and now it looks much better. If that doesn't happen. Uh, that happens in the open source community and that's really awesome. So that's the open hardware logo which was just announced like a few months ago. Uh, it was voted on uh, by people across the internet. I definitely placed my vote and info for that one, but I really like it. Um, and I put that on all of the hardware that I design now. So if you get a circuit board and it has that logo on it, it means it's open hardware, and you should be able to get the schematics online for it. Open Hardware Summit is this thing that first happened last year. It's happening again in September. Uh, it's in New York City. I would encourage all of you to go if you're interested. Uh, it's really cool. It's the day or two days before Maker Fair. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Maker Fair, it's just like a gigantic carnival of people making awesome stuff and sharing it. It's really cool. Uh, but I'll be at both of them. So let me know if you want to go and uh, we can meet up. But um, the Open Hardware Summit is kind of this collaboration of people coming together and trying to define what open hardware is and how we release it and how you can still make money off of it and how it's viable uh, as a business model and not just a maker thing. Yeah? Question about open hardware. So if you decide to make your hardware open source, can you use it on your own, like copy left? If you decide to release it, you don't need to contact anyone? Right. No. It, yeah. So it's it's a purely self-defined license, right? You don't have to go through any registering body or anything like that. It's not like getting a patent or anything. If you stick 
And this is actually true with copyright also. You can stick a copyright symbol on anything you do without contacting anyone, and it's copyrighted. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that you have a trademark on it, but it means it's copyrighted. Uh, and then the same, the same thing applies with copyleft, which I'll talk about in a second, um, where if you say, I'm releasing this open source, you don't have to tell anyone. If you put the open source logo on it, and you say, you, you have to provide some kind of license file with it, and you say, this is you know, how I want to release this. Here's how you can use it. It's, it's legal, as, you, as long as you use a legally binding license a number of which are available. Um, so, you know, along the same lines, protecting yourself. Um, and that's key. Unless you release it into the public domain, uh, even if you release something as open source and people are like modifying stuff, the original project still belongs to you. Uh, and if you say so in the license, people have to attribute it to you. So it's not like you're designing something and then giving it away to the world. Uh, you can still maintain ownership of what you're doing. This is, you know, like what MakerBot does. We design hardware and we release it as open source files, which is great because people can work with it and stuff, but it doesn't give them the right to say that they invented it. It's still our intellectual property. Uh, we're just allowed to do what they want with it. Um, what licenses are generally is it Creative Commons license? I'm going to talk about several of those in a minute, including Creative Commons. Um, that's, the, that's the one I like to use. Uh, but yeah, so I'll go through uh, three or four licenses. Uh, GPL is one of the most common and kind of one of the original. Uh, this is what's used in uh, a lot of Linux distros use GPL, a lot of things use GPL. Um, and so the key thing about this is it's called, uh, the f it's called free software, but they don't mean free as in price. You can actually, you can charge money for open source software, people do. Uh, it's free as in freedom, uh, which means you get the software and you're free to do with what, what, you, what you want with it, which is great. Um, it uses the copyleft uh, license, which you mentioned before, which means the derivatives, anything that you create that's GPL based, you have to release under GPL as well. You can't change license on it, you can't say it's now proprietary. If it was based on something that is open source, you can't take it, make it closed source, and start selling it. That's illegal. Uh, and this, there is a legal license associated with this that you distribute. Um, and then things like share alike and uh, reciprocating to the owner are optional things that you kind of specify in the license. So in terms of things that this one allows you to do, uh, you can run software for any purposes you want. You can, you can use it commercially if you want. You just can't sell it for money and clean, you know, lock it down. Um, and that happens. The, you're allowed to study it, learn how it works, do anything you want with the source code files. Uh, you can redistribute it uh, through your own means as long as you maintain the original license that it was licensed under. Um, and you can improve it, make changes, whatever you want. Um, so, but you have to share it back with the community so that everyone can benefit. So this is one, well, I'll talk about which ones I use in, in a little while. But I, I use that one pretty often, too. Um, FreeBSD, okay, uh, large companies love FreeBSD because it is not copyleft, it's permissive, uh, which means if something is released under FreeBSD and you modify it, you do not have to release it under FreeBSD. Um, so like, Apple, the uh, Apple OS X, their operating system, uh, mm -hmm. is based on the BSD kernel, which is released under this license. Uh, but they modify it and they don't share the source for the parts that they add, because they don't have to under this license. Um, so when you redistribute the source code, the parts that were BSD, they have to maintain the copyright that's associated with it. Um, and you have to notify the people receiving it that it was based on free software, but you don't have to release under the same license. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, it makes sense for some larger companies to use it. Uh, it's mostly used in the BSD Linux-based operating system. OK, Creative Commons, this is my personal favorite, because uh, it gives you a lot of options. So Creative Commons is you kind of craft your own license. You choose what attributes you want to have associated with it, uh, and then that's what you release. So what I, like, what I usually do is you, you can choose from any combination of these, although some of them aren't necessarily compatible with each other. I release my things under a Creative Commons uh, attribution, uh, share alike, and non-commercial. Uh, so what that means is anyone who uses the software that I release under that license, it has, it has to say in their software and the documentation, this was originally written by Jeremy, uh, if you make changes to it, you are required to share those changes with the world uh, in some public format. It doesn't mean emailing them to one other person. It means putting them back on the web, modified, and saying, here's what I improved. Uh, now everyone has access to the improvements I made. And that's really key and something I really like about it. And obviously not everyone's going to 
obey by that. But for the most part, people are pretty good about it, which is which is nice. Um, and the the other important one is non-commercial. So most of the stuff I release, I say, you don't, you can't use this commercially unless you contact me. And whereas that's not true with the previous two licenses. Yeah. Does that mean you can sell it yourself? Yes, I can do I can do whatever I want with it because it's my intellectual property. Um, but anyone else who's downloading it. Uh, cannot use it for, cannot implement it in a commercial product or anything that they're going to make large quantities of money off of, uh, unless they contact me first. Uh, any of these things can be overwritten in any of the licenses with written permission, uh, pretty much. So, and then the equal sign, which is not what I use, uh, means no derivatives. Uh, I don't really like that because it means people can't improve on it. Uh, basically what it is is if you have a no derivatives Creative Commons license and someone downloads your source code, it means they are not allowed to change it. Uh, they can use it for whatever they want, uh, but and they can have access to it, and you can study how it works, uh, but you can't make derivatives of it that you then redistribute. So I don't like that very much, so I don't use that one, but I use the other three. And this is this is what I use for mm, all of my larger projects that I do, pretty much. Um, okay, and then there's public domain, which is, I mean, I, I assume everyone knows what public domain is. Basically, if you release something public domain, you have to declare um, with a legal statement, this is public domain, and this happens with a lot of copyrights that expire after like 100 years into the public domain. So this is the reason why, um, yeah, Shakespeare. There's 430 movies based on Shakespeare books because it's all entered, all of his works have entered the public domain now because the copyrights have lapsed. And once that, something's in the public domain, you can do whatever you want with it. You don't have to attribute it to the original author. You don't have to talk to the original author. You don't have to redistribute anything you do with it. Um, it's totally free game. But it also means that you can't just take something from it uh, and then copyright it. Like if the, co if the um, copyright on Mickey Mouse expires, which is going too soon and he enters the public domain, first off it's going to be chaos. Um, but you can't now redraw Mickey Mouse and say I don't copyright it on this. It's in public domain permanently. Uh, and this is, this is great because you get by far the largest number of derivatives. So if you want to make something and you just want as many people as possible to play with it and do stuff to it and do whatever they want, this is the right option because people will go crazy when things are in the public domain. Uh, right, as evidenced by Shakespeare. Um, so yeah, these are, the, these are the three that I use and open hardware kind of overlaps with the other two. I use Creative Commons uh, on my more complex things, things that are like original ideas or novel implementations. Um, this probably applies to some of you, but not all of you who are doing projects here, depending on what you're doing. If you've written software that implements an algorithm that you created, uh, if you have a unique hardware setup that you haven't found anywhere else, uh, Creative Commons is probably good. Make sure you get the attribution um, and that non-commercial use is kind of key there if you've made something very original. Um, for all my other stuff, all of my smaller, like whenever I release a tutorial with supporting program code and all that stuff, I generally release under the GPL. I say, you know, do whatever you want with it. Put my name at the top of the file saying it's based on my work, but that's pretty much all I care about. Um, so that's that's what I use the GPL for. And then open hardware, I kind of just apply to anything that is hardware. Um, and so that's kind of, it's still kind of a loose definition. Uh, these two are more suited to software, although I do apply them to CAD designs and and circuit board layouts and stuff as well. Uh, but the key with open hardware is you know, you kind of put that emblem on whatever you're doing uh, or say this is open hardware in whatever design files you're working with. Uh, and that's just nice, you're just telling people you are fully permitted to use these design files and recreate it from scratch instead of buying it from me or whatever the alternative is. Can you, is there a reason to like stack licenses? Multiple like, licenses? Yeah. So there's. I generally wouldn't suggest it because there's a lot of places where they can conflict with each other uh, because they allow different things, but it's not unreasonable. Like sometimes what I do uh, with a GPL, when I use the GPL license, uh, it doesn't necessarily say that you have to um, reciprocate and, and share alike if you if you make changes you're supposed to, but it's not as strict as with like the Creative Commons share alike. So sometimes when I put stuff on it, I'll say, you know, please share alike. It's not legal writing by any means, but just, you know, you should, because it's nice. Um, but in general, overlapping licenses is, is difficult. Um, yeah, that's all I have. I tried to make it quick, but if you have any questions on licenses or whatever, I pretty much for most of what you guys are doing in here, GPL or Creative Commons is probably the way to go. Definitely something open source, because you're making cool stuff and you want to share. But yeah, that's about it.
Um, is it possible to change something from like public domain to make it uh, private or something? And can you change the license on it? So once you enter something into the public domain, that's it. It's public domain permanently. You can't put something into the public domain and then decide to take it back out later. Um, so that's kind of one exception. Uh, other stuff, you can change it, but the in terms of legal writing and what you're actually allowed to do starts to get a little bit fuzzy there. Uh, if someone started working with something when it was under one license and then you swap it on them, which one applies to them necessarily, it's hard to say. So it's generally best to just kind of pick one at the beginning. Uh, you can. It's easy to loosen a license later on, so if you want to start with a little bit more strict, like let's say you want to do Creative Commons and you want to say uh, no derivatives to start. So people can't make derivative works of what you did. They have to use it verbatim, uh, and then later on you change it to share alike. Uh, derivatives are allowed. That that's okay because you're adding permissions to it. Subtracting permissions is a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks.